The purpose of today's video is to do accuracy testing on the Ruger Precision Rifle in 308. Um, this is the rifle right here. It is mostly factory, uh, LRI, aluminum bolt shroud, Harris bipod, first gen Vortex PST, 6 to 24 scope, and a precision armament M472 muzzle brake. Other than that, it has a stock barrel, stock trigger, stock everything else. Um, so it should be representative of what a factory precision 308 uh, can do. This is a Gen 1. Uh, you can probably tell from the handguard. Not sure how much that matters versus the Gen 2, but let's get to it. I'm going to start off with cheap stuff, which I'm particularly fond of because I'm cheap. Uh, these are all five shot groups shot at 100 yards. The Wolf 145s did a 1.3 MOA group, not too shabby, for really cheap stuff. It's about 34 cents a round. Um, the Tula 165s did a 1.9 um, inch group for the first five shots. Uh, again, for Wolf 145s, um, this five shot group did 2.2 MOA. If you disregard this flyer, um, or you know, if we did three shot groups like uh, some channels do, the four shots here are uh, one and a half MOA as well, 1.4. Um, as for the Tula 165s, they are definitely not as good at 100 yards. Um, this five shot group measured two and a half inches, 2.4. Um, I don't think you can disregard two flyers. Uh, these three are pretty tight, but all in all pretty respectable for the price. So another group each of the Russian steel stuff over here, uh, Wolf 145s. Here we have five shots, uh, pretty horizontally strung, but, uh, 1.1 inches, uh, definitely not too bad for five shots. And here for Tula 165s, I think I was shooting better as the day went on because these were later in the day than the first targets I showed. But here we have Tula 165 doing an inch and a half for five shots. Definitely not too shabby. Um, one thing I should say, based on these results and based on the results of the Russian Steel 308 shootout we posted before, um, if you were to pick one or the other to stock up on, uh, the Wolf 145s seem like the clear winner. However, in my experience, uh, going out to the 600 yard range, that's the longest range uh, we have available to us to shoot, the two low 165s do seem more consistent. Um, the bullets are definitely less aerodynamic, at least in appearance, um, but the weight behind them, maybe they're less affected by wind. I do prefer the two low 165s. Um, I just bought a bunch more since, like I said, they're 34 cents around. Moving on to brass, um, right after shooting the steel groups, I shot two relatively cheap loads of brass ammo. The first um, was this Magtech, I believe it is, MEN. It's a German NATO spec stuff, 147 grain or 149 grain. Um, right here, the group in its entirety is 2.27 inches, which is not too great. I can't explain this flyer. I don't think it's me pulling the shot because if we disregard this, these four shots are 1.1 MOA, which isn't bad. Um, pretty much one MOA for sealed NATO ball ammo. The other load that I was surprised by is uh, Perfecta. This stuff is brass. I believe 147 grain as well. Pretty standard loading. You can find this at any Walmart. I thought it was better than this before. Um, 2.6 inches is pretty terrible. So that was the worst performer of the day. Um, just a side note, this stuff is definitely more expensive than the uh, Russian steel stuff. So if you're going to be cheap, um, I would just go with the steel stuff between those two. Here we have the MEN shooting five rounds into 1.6 inches. Not too shabby. If we disregard that, which we don't really do, but still these four shots, that's sub MOA 0.9. So not too bad. If you are in the market for uh, NATO spec brass 308 that's sealed that you want to uh, stock up on, you know, for the apocalypse or whatever you guys are into, um, that seems like not that bad of a bet. It's pretty reasonably priced too. Um, Perfecta, again, compared to everything else I shot that day, is just terrible. Um, I would avoid it. It's not particularly cheap, um, and 2.5 inches for five shots is just terrible. So let's, um, let's move on to the match stuff. This is federal gold medal match, 175 grain. Everybody knows this ammo is the real deal. And uh, out of the precision here, we have five shots. Hopefully you can see them all into 0.68 MOA, um, definitely sub MOA. 
Uh, the other load I shot um, is this stuff. This is PMC, X-Tac Match, 168 grain. Not sure if you can read that. The focus is probably pretty sensitive. But the first group of this that I shot right here, five shots, believe it or not. Um, it doesn't look like it. I will, I will put in the footage at the end of this video showing all five shots in real time. Um, I, I couldn't believe the results with this stuff. Uh, I'll break out my calipers here. Edge to edge around 0.7. If we subtract bullet diameter 0.308 from that, uh, we get sub 0.4. So let's call it 0.4 MOA. Definitely sub half minute of angle. So I was ecstatic with that group. Um, especially considering you can usually find that stuff cheaper than gold metal match. Unfortunately, coming from this group, the next group I shot of the PMC, and this is all on me, not on the ammo, because I, I could just feel this wasn't gonna be a good one. Um, 1.5 MOA, normally nothing to sneeze at, but I remember after I fired the last shot of this group, I said something along the lines of. Wow, that's terrible. And finally moving on, uh, last two groups of gold medal match uh, that I shot during the day. I think this is actually the first one I shot, but it doesn't really matter. This was the best group with the gold medal match, 175 grain. Um, 0 0.531, not bad, I'll take it. That's half MOA. Pretty similar, I think, to what Machek shot when he uh, tested this against his Remington 700. Um, and then later on, I got to apologize for the target here getting mangled. Um, these are the adhesive backed targets, which are awesome when you're putting them up, not so much when you're tearing them down. Since there was this one ragged hole here, um, it kind of messed up the, uh, you know, the clover leaf pattern of the shots. Anyway, this is five more shots, uh, 0.66 MOA. In Nut and Fancy's video, he says something along the lines of, I'll have guys commenting with that their Ruger Precisions shoot sub MOA or half MOA all day. And he says something along the lines of, well, I'd like to see it. I can't say that my precision shoots half MOA all day. Clearly it doesn't. I'd say that's down to me. But in any case, um, on this day in particular, I shot four roughly half MOA five shot groups out of my factory precision 308 gen one. I'll take that for the price. Um, I'll take that for more than that price. Uh, the rifle has performed phenomenally in the time I've had it. Um, so no disrespect to nothing fancy. Maybe he just got a bad example, but um, I think the precision deserves a little more credit than it gets in that video. Uh, if you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe, uh, hit like. We're gonna be putting uh, more videos out there in the future. One thing uh, to nothing fancy's credit, his review of the M&P 10 was very persuasive in making us want to try one. So we are going to be doing that shortly. We'll see how the M&P 10 compares to the precision in our experience. So uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. This is PMC x -Tac Match, 168 grain.
That's PMC, 168 grain.